Crapcon is at it again. Okay, let's be a little fair here. I don't actually like uh, mocking companies. It, it's not something that I enjoy. It's not something that I really want to do. I know it's easy to talk about how crappy EA is. or I guess the, the big thing to make fun of right now these days is Bethesda because they keep kind of uh, doing dumb things with their games. Uh, but... We are Nintendo gamers, right? I'm sure almost everyone watching this video is probably a Nintendo gamer. And if you're not, hey, welcome to Nintendo Prime. We talk about Nintendo stuff. Um, the, the, the thing we're going to talk about today is probably not surprising. I'm sure some of you have heard this story. Uh, it has to do with the Street Fighter producer uh, talking about how they need to convince um, how, or basically how to – how's a good way to put this? I guess just simply put, they want us to talk to Nintendo to get more Street Fighter games on switch as if nintendo controls the street fighter ip as if they produce the ip as if they pay for the ip it's really interesting uh hearing the comments so here's exactly what was said quote for quote and this uh was during an interview at egx 2019 um the capcom and street fighter producer yoshinori ono responded to a fan question at the event uh, if there were plans to bring the fourth or fifth entries, you know, Street Fighter 4 or 5, uh, to the Nintendo Switch, here is what he said, and this is courtesy of his translator. So I want to be fair to him. Maybe this sounds a little harsher uh, than what he actually said, but this is what their official translator had to say. It says, can you go over to the Nintendo booth and maybe just, like, shout that at the VIPs in the backstage? Because they're the ones you really need to talk to, not me. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Street Fighter is a Capcom-owned IP. Capcom gets to decide where they want to put their games, do they not? Now, I don't know what Nintendo has to do with any of this. Yes, obviously the question is about is Street Fighter 4 or 5 going to come to Switch. But the bigger question should be, why is Nintendo someone that they should be yelling at? Why does Capcom need Nintendo's money, uh, I assume that's what they want anyways, to bring over their games? Now... He goes on to even talk about the Street Fighter 2 game that we did get on Switch. And he says, even our previous Nintendo title, Ultra Street Fighter 2, Nintendo came to us and said, we want to do something with Street Fighter 2 because it's been 25 years since it came out on previous Nintendo consoles. So I think they're the ones you need to convince. So go and mob that booth. But again, how does this make any sense? Because, yes, just because Nintendo came to you in the first place because they said, hey, look, Street Fighter's anniversary is coming up. Uh, why don't we uh, do something with that? Street Fighter 2. Why weren't you going to Nintendo to say, why don't we do something with this because it's the anniversary of our game? Street Fighter is not a Nintendo-owned IP. Street Fighter is not have anything to do with Nintendo other than just being a game, a franchise that has existed on previous Nintendo consoles. And if you dig even deeper on this, you'll notice that Capcom's support of Switch has been pretty lackluster, uh, considering that they were supposedly on board with this system early. And we knew about Street Fighter 2, uh, but the, even like Mega Man, they brought the collections over. We, we're getting a, a new game from Capcom, Mega Man 11. But you know, Monster Hunter, right? Monster Hunter was a big thing on 3DS. Yes, they did Monster Hunter World, which has been huge on PlayStation 4 and all that. I understand that. But they also talked about how, oh, they're going to do something with Monster Hunter on Switch, or at least they hinted at it. And yet here we are, almost to 2020, and we haven't even heard a whiff that there's even a game in development for Switch from the Monster Hunter team. So... You're sitting here looking at what Capcom's actually brought the Switch, and really you've seen old game ports or new versions of old games that aren't even like remastered. They're just like, you know, maybe some new stuff like Ultra Street Fighter 2. Uh, you're seeing old collections, and then Mega Man 11, which, as awesome as Mega Man is, it's still kind of done in that older style. And it's, it, I don't know, it, it's not necessarily a game that brings the excitement like a lot of other Capcom IPs would. And what's even stranger when you look at this, is that Mortal Kombat 11 from a completely different company did come out day and date on Switch and performed well. So not only have they released Street Fighter 2, a different company released another fighting game, arguably a less popular fighting game, and it sold extremely well. But you're not going to bring Street Fighter 4 or 5 over because Nintendo isn't contacting you to ask you to bring the games over. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, this is just... You know, maybe it's revisionist history, maybe I'm just out of the loop, but I am pretty damn sure that Sony 
and Microsoft do not regularly have to go to a company like Capcom and ask them to bring their multi-platform games to their platforms. I, I This might just be, maybe I'm wrong in this, maybe Sony literally with Ubisoft, Activision, EA, talks to all these companies and asks them, hey, you know what, uh, that Star Wars game you're making, Jedi Last Order or whatever, why don't you bring that over? I'm pretty sure that PlayStation didn't have to ask EA to do that. EA was just going to do that. I'm pretty sure that nobody had to ask Capcom to bring Street Fighter 5 or 4 or whatever to their platforms. They just did it and chose to release it on those platforms because they thought it would be profitable. So why does Nintendo have to contact Capcom and be like, hey, we want your game? I think it's pretty obvious that that Nintendo as a company wants all third-party games. Are you not seeing it? Mortal Kombat 11, The Witcher 3. I mean, the list goes on and on. We got the Bethesda games, Wolfenstein, and Doom. Like, I, you know, we got games coming. You know, Overwatch is out now. We got, you know, Diablo 3. Uh, we had Civilization 6 for crying out loud. Like, what more do needs to be said, basically, in order for companies to understand that Nintendo wants their games? Nintendo shouldn't have to contact Capcom and be like, hey, why don't you bring Street Fighter 6 over? Or Street Fighter 5 or 4 or whatever it is. Why don't you bring that game over? Or why don't you bring over Monster Hunter? Why, why, why are we not getting more Monster Like, why? Why does Nintendo need to reach out to get that support? That is the question that needs to be asked. And that's really what the fan was asking, in my opinion. Asking them, why are we not getting Street Fighter 4 or 5 on Switch? And he says, because Nintendo hasn't asked us to, is basically the answer. Nintendo shouldn't have to ask you to bring it over. You should just do it because you want to, because you like money. That, that, that's really all that needs to be said. Uh, now, obviously, I will say a point in his defense, and this is something that uh, I don't know that a lot of people are considering, but it is something that we should take into consideration. Uh, this is just a producer of the game, which is a pretty higher up person who gets to make a lot of decisions, just like A.G. Aonoma in the Zelda series, you know, Shigeru Miyamoto in the past, Takahashi. Oh, like, we, we know this in Nintendo. The producers have a pretty big power uh, with certain IPs and certain franchises, and the same is true uh, for Yoshinori Ono. He, he has a lot of power with the Street Fighter franchise, but he does work for Capcom, and so there are people ahead of him or, you know, uh, above him that could have said no. It is entirely possible that... Yoshinori Ono actually wants to bring Street Fighter 4 and 5 to Nintendo Switch, but those above him have said, no, we don't think it's a good idea. We think it would be a waste of resources and money. That could be a thing, and to that, his response might be, look, you know, he doesn't want to trash the company he works for, signs his paycheck, but hey, if Nintendo does contact Capcom and ask them for those games, likely the people above him would say, hey, we're going to put these games on Switch now because Nintendo's going to co-advertise the game with us and all that jazz, uh, and that might be a thing that's going on. So it's possible that Yoshinori Onu actually does want to bring all of his games to Switch, uh, but the people ab- above him are saying no. He doesn't want to point fingers at them, so he says if you ask the, you know, Nintendo to ask them, then Nintendo can make it happen. Uh, and that that is a possibility that could exist and is not something that uh, you should ever expect Yoshinori Ono or any person who's currently working for a company to ever divulge because they're never going to trash their own company or make their own company look bad. Uh, but again, that is also a complete guess and a complete shot in the dark and has nothing to do with anything. The fact that Nintendo had to even ask for Street Fighter 2 seems a little asinine in hindsight. I don't know why they weren't even considering Switch uh, for the 25th anniversary of the game. That makes zero sense to me. So all I know is uh, that that is a possible scenario. I don't think it's likely. I think it's more likely. I, I mean, really, again, that, that that's a guess anyways. That's, what the, that's information we do not have. Here's the information we do have. The producer of Street Fighter, a Capcom-owned IP, a person who works for Capcom, has told a fan and told basically the world publicly that if you want Street Fighter 4 and 5 on Switch, stop asking Capcom. Don't ask me. Ask Nintendo, a company who has no rights to Street Fighter, does not make the game, does not pay for the game to be made, and does not decide what platforms that game is put on. So a company that has absolutely nothing to do with a Capcom-owned IP, you have the producer of that IP telling them, ask that company who has nothing to do with us why it's not on Switch, and ask them to ask us to put the game on Switch. So ask a a completely different company to ask us to put one of our games on Switch. Instead of you deciding for yourself, you want to actually put the game on Switch. That is the information we have. That's the facts of the situation. And yes, that just makes me want to call Crapcom who they are. A company that 
produces crap sometimes, and when they do produce a gem, Monster Hunter World, I would argue, is a gem, uh, they, they end up not supporting a platform that has consistently shown love to Capcom IPs over the last 30 years in this industry. So it's weird to see them kind of veering away from Nintendo at a time when Nintendo is becoming more relevant than maybe they've ever been with the core gaming audience since the Super Nintendo days, for crying out loud. I know, yes, Switch doesn't compete on power with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, PC, all. I understand that, but they do have a core gaming audience that's clearly showing up, and it's why we're starting to get some of these bigger third-party ports and all that jazz. So I really want to see Capcom throwing a bone to Switch and just supporting it. I don't want to call them Crapcom. I want them to be the Capcom of my childhood. Now, there is a little bit of positive news of Capcom, and this is because they are bringing over some older games yet again. Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6, we've gotten a bunch of other Resident Evil games as well on Switch. So we do know that they have been doing good in at least bringing their older games to Switch. Uh, the, a lot of this controversy right now is about, like, why aren't we getting your new games? Oh, ask Nintendo. That doesn't make sense. But uh, they are releasing a day one patch for Resident Evil 5 and 6. So when, when Resident Evil 5 and 6 launches on Switch, there will be a day one patch, and that day one patch will include gyroscopic and motion controls. And for some people, this is going to make Resident Evil 5 and 6 the best versions on Switch because gyroscopic controls essentially don't exist on the other platforms for these games. So because of that, that actually can give some people an advantage to enjoying uh, the control scheme of 5 and 6 on Switch and make it a more viable version because a lot of people feel that motion controls, gyroscope controls are more accurate than twin sticks. And uh, there's a little bit of science that actually backs that up if you can adjust to the control scheme. So uh, yeah, that's that's actually good news and good on Capcom for doing it. Um, you could kind of take a twisted look at it and be like, why is it taking a day one update? Why wasn't this something planned from the get-go and just included, you know, with the game at launch that's true uh, i think that's an interesting question to ask them uh it's obviously something they did consider and they're adding at launch and i know day one patch is our normal in the industry uh, but it feels like this is a core feature that should have been built into the port in the first place i don't know maybe that's just me uh and not wanting to give capcom a lot of credit here for something that they're doing that actually is a positive but the bottom line is uh they won't bring over street fighter 4 or 5 or likely any other new game unless nintendo asked them to and i honestly think that's a bunch of bullshit that's a bunch of bull jive uh that's a whatever whatever can you know forming of words and sentences you want to use uh, it makes me pretty pissed off at capcom uh and I know we haven't gotten a lot of Capcom support anyway, so maybe we should be looking more at Bethesda and ask them why we're not getting Fallout games or something or or, or whatever is going to be happening with the next uh, Elder Scrolls game, which is obviously a next-gen game, So and it could be so far off that we shouldn't even be talking about it yet, uh, or, or whatever. And I understand Fallout, like Fallout 76 and all that, has been doing some really crappy stuff, and Bethesda's been going down, down the crapper. Or, or we could talk about why EA isn't showing more support than FIFA, old versions of FIFA on Switch. We, we could talk about a lot of things. Um, you know, 2K is messing around right now with like WWE 2K20. It's just an embarrassment of a game. Uh, very glad it's not on Switch, considering how crappy it is, and so people don't waste their money on it. But it, there, there's a lot of crappy things going on right now, uh, and f somehow Capcom just needed to insert their name in the middle of it by having to mention that Nintendo needs to ask them to put games on their platform. Oh, crap, Com. All right, folks. I am Nathaniel Robo from the Tender Prime. I want to thank you for tuning in to this video. Uh, it was been a lot of fun to make, and I'm glad to be back here on YouTube with all of you guys out there. And, hey, if you like this video, be sure to drop a like. Leave a comment below and tell me your thoughts on Capcom. And what's, maybe, you know, what's your favorite Capcom game? Uh, what game do you wish they had on Switch, whether it's new or old that's not already here? Because they have done a good job bringing their old library over. To give them credit, they have brought their old library over pretty well. Uh, but... We want some new stuff, and this news is just not painting a good light on them. Also, uh, be sure to subscribe for more content. Hit that bell icon to get notified of any new video or live stream that I do. Otherwise, folks, it's good to be back talking Nintendo, good to be back talking video games, and I will catch you guys in the next video.